let's create your first script in Unity and let's get that experience over 9,000. Right, firstly, everything we write in this tutorial, so all of the assets and also all of the scripts are available for download in the description below and they're all released under the MIT license, so you can basically all use them even for commercial purposes. Just make sure to read quickly through it and there's also a link to the GitHub down below. So for each episode of this series, I will be creating a new GitHub branch in the same repository and we'll also be creating individual scenes for each of the episodes. So that's the first thing we'll do. We'll go to this sample scene and we'll rename it. So we'll press F2 and then we'll call this 2 dash first script and it will ask us to reload. We will reload and we also have that open immediately. We'll need a new folder inside of our assets folder. For that we will select the assets folder and then we can either go to this plus and select folder or we can right click on the assets folder create folder and that folder will be named scripts. This is basically where all of our scripts will go right and our first script will be a health script. So health for example for an enemy or maybe for a player. We will right click the scripts folder go to create and then C sharp script. We are then prompted to immediately name that script and we will call this health with an uppercase h. We can hit the enter key to basically confirm the name and we will also make sure that under edit preferences under external tools we have visual studio 19 selected you might have to change that if you had that pre-installed already but if you install that with unity itself it should actually already be enabled here however just make sure that you have that and then everything should work fine if we then double click on the script then visual studio should open and there you go you know that it's ready to use once the this mono behavior here has this certain teal color to it then you know that everything has worked fine and everything is imported correct now you can actually see we're starting with two methods pre-generated this is completely normal so every time you create a script inside of unity it will start with the start method and the update method and it will always start inheriting from mono behavior in this case that's sort of the basic building block of any c sharp script in unity now for our example we will be creating three fields a public integer health which is equal to 100 then a public integer mana which is equal to let's say 50 and then a private integer experience which is equal to zero let's say now there's a very good reason why i made two of them public and one of them private and if we minimize this window then after unity has reloaded now the first thing that we'll see is that we have this warning here so we have an assigned variable but it's never used this is because it's private and is not even being used by unity itself so to actually see those variables we will need to add this script to our scene somehow now we will do this by adding an empty game object so inside of the hierarchy, we're going to right click and create empty. This will create an empty game object with nothing on it. We will call this health. And then personally, when I'm creating empty game objects, I always center them at 000. This is absolutely not necessary, but I always do this because I hate having these weird numbers in there. And 000 just always gets me to the center of things, sort of literally and figuratively at the same time. And now what we can do is we can take this health script and just add it here into the inspector so we can drag it then as you can see this health script now has been added to this game object and what you can see both of the public fields both health and the mana field with their respective values that we've set are already here in the inspector and we could change them for example now this will not change them inside of the script the script will remain the same but this can change them or when we're inside of the game we're basically able to change those values inside of the inspector but what you will also note is that the private value the experience is not actually being shown this is because it is private and to show private variables we can do two things we can either make them public or we can add this attribute which is serialized field so we can add this above it or next to it. So either this way or this way. And then if we let this reload, then as you can see, the experience will also show inside of the inspector. I'm personally more of a fan of adding the serialized field to our fields in these scripts, simply because I like to have my variables private rather than all of them public. Just a good idea. It's a little bit more robust in terms of code. It's cleaner code. But for the time being, I just wanted to show you that those are differences there. And now let's do some cool things with these variables here. So we have these predefined methods, the start and the update method. And there are some very useful comments that have been added as well. So as you can see, the start is called before the first frame update. So once we start a certain scene, this start method is called for each object that contains this class. So we've created our empty game object and we've attached this class to it. So this will be called once. So if we were to do something like health minus equals 20, then in theory, what should happen is once we start the scene, 
our health should not be 100, but 80. Let's see if that works. So I'm just going to hit the play button up here. And then as you can see, health has been set to 80. Once I hit the play button again, exiting the game, you can see that the health has been reset to 100. So this is completely normal. When the numbers and variables change inside of the game, they will always reset to default. So modifying this health has worked in the star method, that's pretty cool. But what is the update method? Well, the update method, as you can see, is called once per frame. So every frame we're calling this update method. And what we can do is, for example, we can say experience plus equals one. So what we'll do is every frame that our application or our game runs, we're going to gain one experience. So let's see what happens there. So once again, let's play and see what happens. And as you can see, I'm getting experience like mad. So once every frame, I'm gaining more and more and more experience. Now the question is, why is this so fast? Well, if we go up here to stats, you can see that our game right now, at least for me, is running at around 600 frames per second. So that's this FPS. So the FPS simply depends on how good your computer is. There's of course nothing in this scene right now. So we're basically running with incredible speed at this point, but we're gaining experience by, by the frame one at a time. So let's stop this again and then everything is reset to zero. So that was a look at the update and the start method in Unity. They are basically fundamental building blocks of the mono behavior class and they're really important. You will get used to working with these because they are basically everywhere and they're used in almost all cases. Right, so congratulations on writing your first script. The last thing I wanted to mention is that when you have this star here, this simply means that this scene has been modified and you can save that by simply pressing Control S. Then this scene and this project have been saved and then everything should be fine. Thank you so much for watching. Next time we will take a look at pressing some buttons and things will appear on the screen. I will see you then. So yeah.